going to be a demonstration video for your Foley catheter insertion and removal checkoff. So first things first, if you um, look at your checkoff sheet, which I have always right in front of me when I show you demonstrations, so this is exactly what we expect out of you when you guys are doing your checkoffs. So with this checkoff sheet, you can always see step one is always perform initial steps, okay? So that's in a separate document. You guys are gonna have to know all of those. That's the very first thing you're gonna do with your patient. Um, the next thing on this is to gather your supplies. So make sure you look up at the top here for your supplies needed. And for this one, you're gonna need your Foley catheter kit and your cath secure device. So in your guys' kits, it should look something like this. Sometimes they look a little bit different, but it should say something to the effect of Foley catheter tray or kit or something like that. Um, and then your cath secure device is usually in your bag in a, one of those uh, plastic bags that you have. So those are the two supplies you guys are going to need, okay? So following your checkoff sheet, how we're gonna do this skill. So first things first, we're gonna prepare a patient. So we're gonna assist our patient into a dorsal recumbent position, drape with the sheet, and do not expose any area aside from the perineal area. So dorsal recumbent position, that means we walk into the room, we do our initial steps. Hi, Mrs. Smith. I'm gonna be doing a Foley catheter on you today. Do you mind if I get you ready? Always asking for consent and telling our patient what we're gonna do so that we aren't touching any private and sensitive areas without their consent. That can be traumatizing to some people who have a history of trauma or are bashful or something like that. We wanna respect them in that way. So we're gonna remove these sh this uh, blanket and sheet set here. We wanna put them in a dorsal recumbent position. So that means kind of frogging the legs out in this way giving us a good access to the area that we need to be. Now, right now we're still preparing our stuff. So, and these mannequins are a little bit hard to kind of maneuver. So I'll just kind of throw her like that. Um, so this is a position, always making sure that we're keeping our patient covered um, during the times that we're not needing to access their um, body parts. So we're gonna cover her back up with the sheet. We've got her positioned correctly and we'll uncover her again when it's time, okay? Um, so again, there on step two, assist the female patient to flex her knees. We're gonna assist the male patient to spread their legs apart, okay? Um, your checkoff is usually on a female patient and then at the end, we ask you, what would you do differently for a male? So I'll kind of show you that um, when we get towards the end of this video. So um, next up, provide perineal care if, ne if necessary. So if they look dirty or they have an odor or anything like that, we're going to make sure that we do a little washing providing perineal care before we put the sterile catheter in, okay? Um, next step is preparing our sterile field. So we're gonna prepare a sterile field by opening the sterile catheter kit between the patient's legs to form our own sterile field. Now this is something that is, um, can be done a variety of different ways, okay? Um, the most important thing, I really don't care how you open your kit, really how you get this catheter in, what I do care about is that it's done sterily. And the way that I'm gonna show you is the best way to keep it done in a sterile fashion. So following this way will not lead you astray, okay? So we're gonna expose our patient here and we're gonna set up our sterile kit here in between the patient's legs. So I'm gonna go ahead and expose you, Mrs. Smith, okay? I'll be sure to get you covered up when we're all finished. So we're gonna take the, the tray out of this kit. Now, everything inside this, this kit here is sterile, but we don't necessarily need any of that to be sterile at this moment. The stuff inside this wrapping does need to stay sterile. So we get it out of this plastic and we can get that off to the side because we don't really need it. There's a little sticker there on top. You can just kind of get rid of that. And then we're gonna set this in between the patient's legs, okay? This is where our sterile field is gonna be. We always open sterile, field, sterile packaging in a certain manner, so make sure that you're considering that. So we're gonna go ahead and open our kit um, in this way, okay? So we're gonna remember only touching that outer one inch margin, and then we're gonna open the side farthest away from us here. And then we're going to open these two sides here. And this is sometimes difficult keeping these all out. So you, this is an important step here to make sure that you are not having these corners and flaps flopping back on the sterile field after you've already touched the corners. Cause even if you've touched that one inch margin and same with your sterile gloves, if it flops back over, now you've contaminated. So kind of pulling the sides in different directions is gonna help you get that out um, well.
okay? And lastly, opening this spot here towards you. And again, kind of maneuvering how you pull is going to be um, the best way to do that, okay? And you can always touch that outer one-inch one, one inch margin safely, okay? Um, next step on your checkout sheet, remove the sterile drape from the catheter kit, grasp under the corners and allow it to unfold. Do not shake. Be careful to only touch that one inch margin um, and place that drape vertically to increase the size of the sterile field. Now, what that means is I'm going to move, I'm going to move this kind of this way so that we can extend the sterile field. Now, it's totally fine that you move it. You just have to know how to move it. You know that I can't touch in the middle of this with my bare hands. I can't touch any of this white except for that one inch margin with my bare hands. So when I move it, I can either touch on the underside and move it this way. And I like to kind of turn it into a square far away from the patient. And then what I do, I'm gonna get my sterile gloves out because I don't need this package to be sterile because I'm gonna put them on. And then I'm gonna grab this drape here by those outer one inch margins, carefully not to touch anything else in our sterile kit. So I've got the one inch margin, I'm gonna let it unfold, only touching that one inch margin, okay? And shiny side always goes down, okay? Because if you think about getting liquid on a shiny side, it's going to roll right off and we kinda want it to be absorbent. So we're gonna grab that only by that one inch margin and just very gently, Get it right here. Mine kind of flopped back, so we're gonna go ahead and just do it that way. And then that has now extended my sterile field by a lot. Okay, so that's the point of that. So now our sterile field is all set up. And so the next step is going to be put on our sterile gloves. We all know how to do this already. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these on. Being careful when I open the package that it does not flop back off onto the side to contaminate. I'm only touching that one inch margin, grabbing the cuff of um, my left hand glove, right? Just the cuff. I'm going to slip my hand in there like so. And then I'm going to use this to scoop into that next glove. We know how to do sterile gloves, right? Hold it like this not using our thumb so that we don't graze our hand, pulling that on, making sure our cuffs are up and over and keeping us safe, secure, and sterile. And so now we're sterile and we are ready to get our sterile stuff um, all set up, right? So keeping our hands above our waist like we know we're supposed to. Um, next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna attach our pre-filled water syringe to our catheter and then we're gonna carefully remove the wrapping off the catheter and lubricate the tip. Okay, so first of all, I'm gonna get rid of this. This is a fenestrated drape. I don't use it personally. You can use it if you want to. Um, if you did want to use it, it just goes like this. And then you just only expose the opening. And some people like it because it extends your sterile field. So you are more than welcome to use it if you want to. I don't, so I'm gonna get rid of it, okay? So we've got our kit and now we can touch our kit however we want. I'm gonna fix my camera angle so you can kind of see what's going on in here, okay? So hold tight. Okay, so got my sterile hands and then I've got my kit here. So to get my kit ready, I like to take these two things apart and I set them up nicely. Remember, I am sterile, so I can touch anything on here with my sterile gloves, okay? Anything but the patient. Once I touch the patient with my hands, I'm contaminated. So first thing we wanna set up this, we're gonna attach our water syringe. This is what we use to blow up the balloon here to keep it secure. I'm gonna get this off to the side because I don't need that. I'm gonna attach this right here. Trust me, if you forget this step, it's hard to um, attach this later because you're only gonna have one sterile hand. So we attach that now, and then we carefully, carefully undo the plastic on this package, okay? Because if you start pulling this out and this catheter flings all around and you touch your patient with it, you've contaminated, and then that's a second try on this check off. So be very, very mindful when you're taking off that plastic. Okay, and this can lay anywhere on this sterile stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and open my lubricant. You can do this a variety of ways. 
I like to just open it like this. And I like to open the middle part like this. And then I just take this and put it inside and just kind of up and down like this. That's how I do it. You can squirt it out and roll it around in it if you want to do that. That's totally fine too. And then I just kind of let it hang out right there till I'm ready for it. Then I open my swab sticks. Because remember, you're going to have only one hand to work with later. And I like to open these and set them right there so that I can grab them appropriately when I need them. <clears throat> okay, so we've got that. So when we're talking about female insertion of a Foley catheter, first thing we're gonna do now that we have our stuff all set up, we're gonna use our non-dominant hand, our sterile non-dominant hand to pick up, um, to uh, retract the labia minora and expose that urinary meatus. So at that time that I use this hand, to go up here and spread these apart. Now this hand is contaminated and I can no longer ever touch any of this stuff with my hand. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna spread this apart so that I can see what I'm doing. And then at this time, I'm gonna use my dominant hand um, to pick up an alcohol swab stick, okay? There's three swab sticks. First thing we're gonna do is cleanse the far labia minora, then the near labia minora, and then right down the middle. One swipe with each stick and then that stick gets discarded, okay? Be mindful not to take your dirty stick across your sterile field, okay? In a perfect world, you'd have a trash can somewhere off to the side. So you can just pretend you do, throw it on the ground, whatever, just don't contaminate your field with this step, okay? Um, always swiping from the top to the bottom. Um, and do not place the dirty thing, the dirty swap stick back into your sterile field either. That's second try also, okay? So that's what we're gonna do first. I'm gonna grab a stick right here. I've got my labia minora spread here. And then we're gonna go one swab to the far side, one swab. I'm gonna take it away from my sterile field and drop it into the trash. I'm gonna go the near side with one swab, take it away from my sterile field and drop it. And then I'm gonna go once down the middle, swab away from my sterile field and drop it, okay? Remember, we're not dropping our arms below our waist, just keeping our arm here at all times, okay? And now we're going to insert our Foley catheter here. We're gonna go ahead and leave our non-dominant hand over here. We're gonna grab our catheter and then um, we're gonna insert it into the urethra until urine appears and then advance another two to three inches, okay? Um, it's good to note that if no urine appears, the catheter may have been misplaced in the vagina when you're doing a female Foley catheter. It is harder than it looks sometimes until you get the groove of it, okay? So if this were to happen, we're going to leave the catheter in the vagina as a landmark so that, and then we insert another Foley catheter into the urethra to make sure we're not putting two in the same spot. It kind of helps us find the right spot, okay? That's a trick I learned a long time ago, um, but hopefully, I mean, you can't really miss the urethra here on this one. So this is your urethra. You're going to go in using your lubricated catheter, pushing, pushing, making sure not to contact the labia with um, your sterile glove. Okay, so just pushing, pushing until we see urine, which you're not going to see urine on these mannequins, and then another two to three inches. So you just need to know that, okay? At this point, we're just going to pretend that we have urine flowing in this bag. Okay, so urine's flowing in that bag. And then um, we're going to um, slowly inflate the balloon. We have our hand here that's still technically sterile. We're gonna slowly inflate this balloon here with the, with the cc's of water. Now you can always look on your catheter kit. Sometimes it's on here. Right here you can see the size of the balloon. So this is a, first of all, 14 French catheter that tells you the size of the catheter. And then the size of the balloon, five mils. So we don't ever wanna put more um, water into the balloon than what it holds. So this only holds five mils, but I have a 10 mil syringe. So I'm only gonna put five into this. So I'm gonna slowly inflate to five. If our patient feels a, an astounding amount of pain, that would mean that we're trying to inflate this balloon in the middle of the urethra, which is a small place you're trying to expand and it's very painful. So if that were the case, we would deflate the balloon advance it a little bit more until it's in the bladder and then try to reinflate the balloon, okay? So I've got five cc's in there. This takes some practice here, but at this point, nothing needs to be sterile, okay? Because we're done being sterile now. So I can take this hand right here and just use it gently to take off this. And that's kind of, sometimes it does leak and it's okay. 
Okay, so we're gonna let that stay there. We're gonna get rid of this um, syringe over here to the side. And then at this point, um, we're going to, we got the balloon. We need to make sure that we check to make sure that we can feel um, resistance here, that it's in the right place. We feel our balloon expanding, we've got it. We can feel it, that it's not coming out. So that's very gently that we do that. We've got that. At this point, we can take off our gloves and we can discard them, okay, into the trash here. And then now at this point, um, we need to secure the cat catheter tubing to the thigh. That's where your cath secure comes in. So you've got your cath secure. You're going to open it up. Looks like this. You're going to take these two sticker parts off. I like to do it while pushing it kind of up to the thigh here. I don't know if you can see that. We'll just say it goes right here. Trying to get it as you know, flat and perfect as possible. So those two little winged areas go like that. And then the rest of that is Velcro that sticks together to hold that catheter tubing so there's not so much. We don't want it, we want to give them some slack so that they can move because it's painful if this keeps tugging. So I like to give them about this much slack and I like to um, catch it about right there. So they have enough slack here to where it's not painful. After that, we're going to take this drainage bag. We're going to unfold it because it comes unfolded like this so it can expand and fill with urine. And then we're going to hang it off the side of the bed, down um, off the side here, always below the level of the bladder. That's the super, super duper important part. We want to make sure that it's below the level of the bladder, okay? Make sure it's on the bed frame. Make sure it's not secured to the bed rail that goes up and down because that can cause a problem. And always ensuring that there's no obstructions or kinking in the tubing, okay? Um, after that, we're going to dispose of the equipment and we're going to leave the room. Okay, those are the things that we're going to do. We're going to document the size of the catheter, the use of sterile technique, color, odor, clarity, and amount of urine that we got through the tubing, and then the patient's response to the procedure. Okay, and so that's how you insert a female catheter. Okay, and when we're talking about doing a Foley catheter on a male, everything is the same up until this point, up until we, right before we put in the catheter, okay? At this point, what's gonna be different is first of all, my hand is going to hold the penis like this in a slight upward motion, still with my non-dominant hand, okay? So slight upward tension. We're gonna maintain this position throughout the whole procedure, okay? If the patient is uncircumcised, which this patient is, unfortunately, the foreskin does not retract on this mannequin. However, if the patient is uncircumcised, we need to make sure that we retract the foreskin first before we do anything else. We have to retract that all the way back till we see the head at the tip of the penis, okay? At this point, after we've retracted the foreskin, um, we're going to take our um, swabs and we're gonna do the same thing. One motion with each swab stick only and then discarding, making sure not to go over our sterile field, okay? Um, each swab stick only used one time. Don't place it back on your sterile field and only using your dominant hand. So you're gonna grab your one swab stick. You've got your retracted penis here and you're gonna start at the urinary meatus. You're gonna go around with the first one in a circular motion and then you're going to drop it. Your second one, you're gonna go out a little bit farther than you did before around here. Just circle right around, drop it. Same thing with the third around here, drop it, okay? So that's what we're doing with that. And then at this point, we're gonna take our lubricated catheter with our dominant hand, we're gonna pick it up and we're gonna insert it into the urinary meatus. We're gonna advance the catheter on a male until urine flows, but then after that, we're gonna continue and advance it to the bifurcation, which means to the Y. Let me show you, this is where it Ys. This is what a bifurcation is. So you go all the way in with this. Okay, and to the Y. So that's the difference on a male. So we're gonna go ahead and insert it in here. Again, trying to be careful not to touch anything aside from it. We'll pretend urine flows at this point. We're gonna keep going all the way to the Y, which this doesn't go all the way to the Y, but that's what we would do on a real person. So say that during your checkoff, all the way to the Y until urine flows. If you feel resistance upon insertion, you may be up against that prostatic sphincter, which happens in a man, okay? If that's to happen, we're just gonna hold that catheter very steady in its current position, and we're gonna wait because that prosthetic sphincter will typically relax, and then we can continue to insert. 
We're never going to force a catheter during insertion. If resistance continues, then we're gonna stop and we're gonna notify the, the doctor, okay? At this point on a male, we would continue the procedure in the same way, inflating this Foley balloon and then anchoring the Foley catheter to the side of the bed. Now we're going to remove the Foley catheter. This part of the procedure is the same for both a male and a female. Um, and so step one, we're gonna assess our patient to a dorsal recumbent position. We're gonna make sure that we got our gloves on. They do not have to be sterile, just regular gloves. Um, assist them into dorsal recumbent position. Let them know what we're doing. Drape them with a sheet. Don't expose any area um, aside from the perineal area in areas that you're working with. Assist the female to flex her legs. Assist the male to spread his legs apart, okay? After that, the very first thing we're gonna do before we remove any Foley catheter is go down to um, where the catheter bag is draining and we're gonna empty it, okay? These pieces right here come undone from here and then you hold them over a graduated cylinder where you're going to, like a, it's a glorified cup. I'll show you guys in class, I'm sure. And we will drain it into that cup. So we wanna make sure that this bag is empty before we go removing the Foley catheter. So that's step one. After that's finished, um, then we're going to actually get started on removing it. So, Mr. Smith, I'm gonna remove this Foley catheter from you, okay? I'm gonna need to expose your area here. And at this point, we wanna make sure that first we unsecure it from the leg. So we're gonna unsecure our Velcro. We're gonna unsecure our cat secure. Just get rid of that. And now that's done. Okay, next thing we're gonna do is deflate that balloon. We do not want to pull this out while that balloon is inflated. That will hurt so very badly. So we're gonna get our syringe and we know that we put five cc's or five mils in this balloon. So we wanna make sure that we get five cc's or five mils right back out, okay? So if we just connect this to our port here, it will come back by gravity. You'll see your plunger start to go back up. That kind of saves us um, some forcefulness. Oop, it fell off saves us some forcefulness on having to pull back. You can still pull back. It's just easier if you let gravity help you. Make sure that you get your five cc's back and then you're gonna instruct the patient to take several deep breaths and relax. And then we're gently gonna remove that catheter, holding it upright when it's removed so that all the drainage and the, the urine goes back into the collection bag and not all over the bed, okay? After that, we'll dispose of it into the waste bin. So take a few deep breaths here. Gonna pull it out, pull it out slow and steady, holding it like so and then we can dispose of it in that way. We're gonna remove our gloves, um, return the patient to a comfortable position. And then after that, we're going to make sure that we document where it didn't happen. Do your final steps before you leave the room. Document um, when is the patient due to void. So typically eight hours after the Foley removal, depending on your hospital policy, okay? So we wanna make sure that we document that. Um, catheter type and size removed, um, color, odor, clarity, and amount of urine that was obtained, and then the patient's response to the procedure.